Today we turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 29 through 42. The next day, he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, for he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this I came baptizing with water, for that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend on him, I myself did not know, on him as a heaven from the dove from heaven, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, So you are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. This is the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. I don't know about you all. But I enjoyed last Sunday. Not only did I not get to sleep in, but it's a day of forced rest. You see, snow days are wonderful in that way. When you can't go out and do all of the things you think are on your to-do list. They're a day of which you can be lazy, or you can do as you will. It's an extra day of Sabbath, or at least that's how I, I chose to view it and take it. Sabbath is something that we don't always recall in the life of the church, Sabbath being a day of rest. You know, on the seventh day, God rested. On the seventh day, well, this is our seventh day. And we're called to worship and to rest and to take time from the meaning of the rest of our world and days and focus entirely on God. It's not always a day that we use in that way. For many of us, it is just this morning time, and the afternoon is filled with other tasks and activities. And I don't know if in the life of our culture and times, if that will ever change. But I do know that I find this story of the disciples fascinating. You see... I use my children a lot as illustrations, sorry, is what I've got. But when you walk into preschool, outside of most of the, the classroom doors is a bin, it's a tub. That's the show and tell tub. How many of you remember show and tell? Who doesn't love show and tell? You take your most precious and prized item, as long as it fits in your backpack, and you put it in the bin so that in front of all of your friends, you can say, this is important. 
left. <laughs> right? Isn't that like the most awesome moment of our childhood lives? Who doesn't love that? I mean, just this last week, it was, of course, the gifts that they got for Christmas. Oh, every single child pulled out their newest acquisition and said, this is important and significant. Well, I have a little show and tell for you today. Can you see it? It's a small version. If you want the larger version, it's right there. Or if you flip to the front of your bulletin, it's right there. In red, even. Who doesn't like that? It's a symbol of, of, of our faith as the disciples of Christ. Our denominational symbol. We chose a chalice because as the Christian church disciples of Christ, we believe in the Lord's Supper as the central part of our worship. On the side of the chalice is inscribed St. Andrew's Cross because St. Andrew was the patron saint of Scotland from which the Presbyterian Church came. And the Presbyterian Church is the founding church of two of our founders, Thomas Campbell and Alexander Campbell, were both Presbyterian ministers before coming to the New World and beginning a denomination. And we chose red because of the red blood of Christ. And it's a bright and bold color. That's it. But man, am I excited to show this to you. How many of us have crosses that we wear as necklaces, male, female, whatsoever, or have it on our car in some way? How many of us have symbols in and around our lives? that are almost so familiar we forget to be excited about them. You see, when the disciples met Jesus, it was as if, if John had this new friend, right? Oh, do you remember those days with your new friend and you introduced your new friend to everybody? Or your best friend. That's the, that's the thing, right? This is my best friend. I had a friend recently ask, you know, what do you tell high schoolers to remember as they are graduating from high school? And of course, you know, all of the advice and things that they, they said, well, you know, someone said, we're do what you remember in kindergarten. And I'm like, exactly. Somehow as adults, we lose <coughs> sight of the fact that it is important to still show and tell. see, John, as he was meeting with the disciples, as he was leading, as he was worshiping, as he was praising God and trying to be the herald of the good news of Christ, was completely willing to say, this man is for whom I do all of the things I do. Let me show you him. Let me tell you about him. We call ourselves disciples. How do we show it? How do we tell it? And if you really want, you can take notes. There are notepads. Someone asked for those. There are notepads in the pews now for you to take notes on. And it comes down, it begs of us the question that in our adult reasoning, we assume too much. We assume that I am a Christian and this is how I live my life. You should see it and know it because, of course, I know it. Doesn't everything I say and do bespeak of my belief? I wear the symbols of the cross. Of course that means I'm a Christian. I put my robe 
robe on on a Sunday morning, of course that means I'm a minister. Or I wear the little handy collar thing. Those things are not comfortable. You will never see me in them. That shows in some ways if somebody knows what the symbol means. But if you don't know what this means, it's meaningless. Or if the meaning's been distorted. Because I can flat out tell you the symbol of a cross has been distorted. People wear it just because it's a cool look. Or they were given it, but they don't know what it means. Because someone did not take the time to tell them they assumed they knew. John makes no assumptions here. John says, I'm not the one you are looking for. Jesus is. Let me introduce you to him. In your bulletins is this page. There's a page. There's a white page. Everyone pull out the white page with a cool image of our church on it and the New Year's resolutions. For those of you that were here on New Year's Day, I asked for resolutions for the body of the church. On the back is the list as they were written out. Some of them were a little bit more personal than others. Others of them were a little interesting. There are a lot of repeats, but in integrity and transparency, you get the full list. The word that struck me was the word more, and for those of you that were able to have access to, to either Facebook or the internet or whatsoever this last week, you saw a little bit of my meditation thought. But you see, on the front is the image of the church. With our desires, with our hopes, with our dreams for this body and for the greater body. Because to limit it to just these walls is too small. But the only way we can do all of these things is through show and tell. I know, it's going back to kindergarten, preschool. Who would have thought? But as adults, we have to stop the assumptions that people see in us all that we think we project. <coughs> we have to stop the assumptions that our meaning is understood. We have to spell it out. We have to share it out. We have to show it out. We have to take our little symbols of faith and be just as excited as the three-year-old pulling it out of their backpack and say, this is who Jesus is. Let me tell you about him. This is who Christ is to me. It is the most important and wonderful thing in my life, and I cannot wait for you to hear about it. How often do we have those conversations with people? We don't. Let's be honest. I might somewhat more, but I know that it's not a conversation we have each and every day because we think, we assume that the person next to us either already sees it in us or we don't want to offend them. We live in a world of offense. Where the only way you can get over offending another is by being in conversation with one another. And being willing to hear their stories at the same time you share yours. That's what show and tell is about. Have you considered the fact that you take turns? Who likes taking turns? 
No one. I want to go down the slide ten times more than you. And I'm faster at getting around, so hmm. Sometimes I think that as adults we are just small children in adult bodies with more responsibility. Because nobody likes bills. I do like driving a car though, so I will take that one. But these words, these images, these resolutions, everything that we hope for in the life and in the body of the church will not happen if we do not do two things. Stop assuming that everyone sees Christ in you. Start doing. Start doing Christ in and each, everything, every day, every thought, every motion, every moment. I had a youth who I have not spoken to in years. Send me a message, an email. She got a hold of it through whatever connectivity of life. Sometimes I don't know how things are connected. But she asked me, what are the steps? And I said, the first step is sometimes just knowing and acknowledging and not assuming. But it should just do it. All of us who lived through the 90s know that ter terminology made famous by Nike. Just do it. Begin. Don't question. Don't ask. Don't assume. Start somewhere and keep on going. The only way we can do all that we hope for. And some of these are profound statements of, of what we can do. We want to grow our compassion for one another. Who doesn't want that in the life of a church? Spread the word. Add more. Do more. Pray more. The word more struck me. Because it means that we have already begun. We just want to do more. So my call, so the challenge, so the hope for of this church and this congregation in, in the upcoming weeks and the upcoming months is to do as we want and hope and pray for. To not just hold this piece of paper and say, oh, this is so nice and pretty and wonderful. And it makes a beautiful image for the front of our bulletin because it does. But to take one of these statements and to do it. To treat it like show and tell and make it the most important thing of that moment in time and tell each and every person we come into contact with how excited and enthusiastic we are about it. I don't know if I could create a handy little image of the church for you to carry around in your purses or wallets or pocketbooks to pull out like a three-year-old and say, look at this, have you seen this? Do you know what this is? But that's what John is asking of us to do. He's asking us to follow after Christ. He's asking us to make Christ the most important part of our lives, of our understanding of who and what we are. He wants to show people that, to tell people that. So it's up to us. It's up to us as people of faith and a people of Christ to not fall into the rut of assumption 
and if this is the way that I've always done it, and this is who we are, and this is what, and oh, everyone knows that. With the hand motion too, you have to do it with that. We have to recall that in our memories and in our understanding, we forget. Unless we're doing it over and over and over again, we forget. Let's be honest enough with ourselves to accept that. So we've got to regain the enthusiasm, regain the passion, and be like a little kid and show and tell. 